This is the story behind my 13 years of content creation. How it took me across the world and also what it taught me. You should expect a total roller coaster. I consider myself extremely lucky and I could go on forever with all the memories I've made over the last 13 years. From working on popular game title, to moving all the way down to Los Angeles, playing in the League of Legends professional team, going on business trips while I was working at Unity, and then I ended up visiting the Philippines, Tunisia and India. Those were all things that stemmed from my effort in content creation, it's just the one that I have on top of my head. But there is one specific thing that I overlooked as a content creator, and that is feedback and growth. I have received a lot of helpful feedback that I've incorporated in my work, and now I feel like it's better than it would be without that. And also, this is targeted to my, uh, my game dev homies that want to get a game dev job. I've never had any issue finding any game dev job because I have a very public portfolio. I learned how to code on my own and here are all the 400, 600 things I did, <laughs> just for fun. Now obviously this little tangent here, um, I did not send my gaming channel, I, I sent them into the KN, which was the uh, tutorial channel, right? Um, but before we get into the code, I gotta tell you where all of this began. During my teenage years, I was a huge MMO nerd. Spending 16 hours in front of a computer was an easy feat for me. I would do it for RuneScape, and then later on in life, I did it for World of Warcraft. I've enjoyed my time in Azeroth so much, I have fond memories with friends, some of them that I still have in my life today. Despite what some outsiders think, these years in a virtual world were not wasted whatsoever. I actually, I was extremely happy as a teenager. I had a really good time playing and I wanted to share that with everybody. From making fun videos with my friends, high level PvP guides, music videos, cinematic videos, to even making tutorials on how to make these type of videos. This side hobby of making videos, it got me in the most popular guild in World of Warcraft at that time, where I would be hanging out with Swifty, Ateen, Bajira, and all the popular WoW influencer during that season. The connection I've made during that time, while I was a teenager, it ended up giving me the opportunity to move to California down the line. And just like that, I was a content creator. I was also at the age of um, having to figure out what to do with my life. Um, school was not an option, I was a high school dropout. But to be frank, I was extremely lucky because I knew what I wanted to do. It was clear to me, like from day one, it was clear. I wanted to create my own 3D world that people could partake in. And that is because living in these 3D worlds made me happy and I wanted to share it with everyone. First step in this endeavor was to create a World of Warcraft private server with my own environment, my own rules, basically my own game. I was learning SQL databases, networking and world design. Slowly but surely, I was picking up skill of a developer. In fact, I was a game dev. However, to have full creative control over a 3D world, I needed to leave the World of Warcraft sandbox. This is when I decided to pick up Unity. And this is when I started N3K Yen. So in my early 20s, I remember working on jobs I didn't really like. Um, working on ERP, using WinForm, just, just like jobs, dev jobs that I really didn't enjoy too much. But I would go there. I would be at the office and I would write down ideas for video or ideas for game I wanted to make when I got home. <laughs> so that was pretty much the only thing I had in mind during that time. There were some days where I was posting three times on the channel. In fact, not only was I posting three times, I also had another channel called N3KFR, which I did the same thing but in French. Yeah, I was all about making content back then. I think 
If I'm going back on it, I think the feeling I had was I hated my job so much that I wanted to find an out. And uh, content creation offered me a bit of side income and I thought, this is going to be my out. And I kept this rhythm for a while. Yeah, in fact, I kept this rhythm for like three years. Uh, I didn't have much to do back then, huh? so making videos on a daily basis was, was possible, I guess. <laughs> And eventually it did pay off, because uh, toward the end I was making $300 to $500 every month from the YouTube channel. One of my friends at that time, who was also a previous employer of mine, he saw the growth in my channel, he saw the momentum, and he was in the YouTube space, so he, he knew like how things can, can take off if you handle them properly. Um, he saw my channel having a lot of growth, and he got in contact. And this friend, he was the CEO of a YouTube MCN. For those of you who haven't been here during the old YouTube days, there was a point in time where you needed to be signed up with an agency if you wanted to make money off YouTube. And this is where the MCN arrived. It would be a company that would offer their clients, so somebody that has a YouTube channel, they would offer them a um, ads on their, on their videos. You can now put ads on your video and then make money from it. Today we have the YouTube Partner Program, which is basically Google's version of a MCN. They receive money from advertiser, they put ads on your video and then you receive 50% of that cut. So this is how YouTubers make money now. Now given our previous working experience, it was to be, I was to be more than just somebody that was part of the MCN. So he actually made a custom contract and sent it my way. Now check this out because this is appealing. This was a three year consulting agreement where as an independent consultant in the business of content creation, I would develop the N3K brand. I was going to be paid $2,000 a month with performance reviews after a period of 30 days. The IP acquired would be the YouTube channel, the French YouTube channel, website, Facebook, Discord, and any other thing around N3KEN. I'm not gonna lie, this looked a little bit shabby back then as well, but then we had the other clause that made me feel secure about this, uh, this agreement. The consultant would continue to earn 100% of all revenue generated from this IP until the company incrementally adds new revenue from investment made into this IP. This is in addition to the consultant base salary. So I felt pretty good. I hated my job back then. I was like, hey, you know, I get to have like this small amount of income coming in and then on top of it, I'll be able to cash in my YouTube income. I saw the potential in it. I saw the revenue like going up really fast. So this looks like an amazing deal. But hold the phone. This is not the cherry on top. The cherry on top is that he was also willing to pay for my living expense. The only thing you have to worry about is making your channel successful. I was stoked. I wanted to go there. I was about to move to the Philippines, be on my own, not have to worry about making ends meet and dedicate my life to creating content about things that made me happy. He would rent for me a studio in a residential tower inside of Manila, which looked really good. Uh, the view was insane at the exception that there was no furniture. So I would spend most of my time in the office in a green room closed off with no window. This was the extent of it. This was the investment made in my IP. Just me trying to make it on the internet. So needless to say, I fully committed all my waking time to, um, to making this work. And that's it. That's what we have. Um, again, sorry for my voice. Sorry for talking fast. I'm just, I need to go get some rest. So uh, I'm gonna go do just that. Thanks a lot for watching. And guys, I hope we can get in contact soon and actually talk. And I will see you some other day. Cheers. It was rough. It took so much effort just to get my salary out there because I didn't have a bank account and thing like that. So I had to ask him, beg him for my money basically on a, on a monthly basis. And I was living in the Americanized section of Manila. So while $2,000 US goes a long way in the Philippines, in the American town inside the Philippines, it's still pretty much the same. So I was living pretty much on the poverty line over there. I felt cheated because there was talk about me having a team over there, having a help from other people, video editors, people that would research video, just like an actual like studio environment. A little bit like Bracky's ad back then. We had Bracky's as a reference. This is kind of how it all started. My friend said, hey, I have a studio space in the Philippines and we have like employees over here. So that's kind of what I was expecting when I when I first arrived in the Philippines. So our relationship degraded. It went in a really 
bad place, I could say. Uh, I was fighting with him, I was fighting with his brother, which hated me. Um, yeah, and one day I woke up and I called my mom and I said, Mom, I need money. I need money to buy a flight ticket back home because I'm coming back home and I need that. In reality, this was completely my fault. The contract was really cleared. I was so pissed. Guys, you don't even know how fucking pissed I was. I ended up like consulting a legal firm, specialized legal firm, this kind of matter. Um, they told me straight up this was a fuck you contract and I got fucked. I think I would have been a lot more careful even back then if it was not for the relationship of trust that I had with this person. We were friends. Uh, we were going on trips together with his brother, his wife. I've never talked about this situation um, this openly before. I think I was mostly ashamed of having signed a really shitty contract. I was exhausted, angry, <laughs> angry at myself. I now, I take law very seriously. I take every agreement, even if they're, if they're coming from good faith, I read that shit at least for three days in a row. And to some extent, like uh, this situation, when I talk to, the, to, to, to people close to me, right? They, they do point out that I had this happen at a very young age, and that's good. Because <laughs> if this type of bullshit would happen at a much later time in my life, I felt like I would have lost a lot more. Anyways, since you cannot stay a sad loser forever, I decided I was going to do the same thing all over again. And this is where I was born Epitome Games. Good morning, I am Mike, this is Pepe, and we've got an important message for you today. And it says that I'm no longer a owner of N3KEN, I don't have access to it. I've done video my entire life. When I was good at game, I made video about game. When I was teaching, I made video about teaching. This is what brought N3K to life. And if I find another passion in the future, I'll probably make videos about it. But game dev is still something I have in my heart right now, so I still want to teach that. Basically, I still want to do N3K. Uh, but it's gonna have to be under a new name. It was with a lot of momentum that I've started Epitome Games, doing exactly the same thing as I was doing on N3K Yen, competing with my own channel, and it felt bad. But the time passed, I kept making videos with uh, not the same release rate, also with not the same conviction, because I, you know, I didn't want to do the same thing I did for N3K Yen. At this point, I was 24, 25. I wanted to live life a little bit, not just stand in front of my computer, so I kept doing that. Until the next asshole came around. What? It has come to our attention that you are infringing on our mark. Based on a review of YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Patreon, and a Google search, you're currently using the mark Epitome Games in connection with videos discussing game development, the infringing mocks. To give you some context over here, this is a company that decided to google their company name and they found my channel instead. Accordingly, these assholes demand that you immediately cease and desist from infringing on its mock by discontinuing the use of Epitome game. Basically, delete your channel. Oh, but we're not done. Here are the demands. You have to remove, replace, or cease to further display any reference to Epitome game. I have an intro in every single video that says Epitome games. Just putting that out there. Destroy or deliver any material regarding Epitome Games. Provide instruction to all the third parties assisting in the promotion of your product, services to remove, replace, and cease any promotion advertising. And of course the classic, provide this firm with an accounting of all the sales report, invoicing, and purchase order for any product that you have. Hey, 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 check, check, look at me. I am just one person making free educational video on Unity. I'm making little to no money doing it. I can safely say that I'm not infringing on your fucking visual novel IP. In fact, I might be giving it free SEO. And the viewers are loving it. They're finding it useful. Just look at what it is that you're actually trying to get rid of. Wait, what's this? This is my first Epitome game video. In February 2019. There is plenty of people out there uh, re-uploading my content as well, so I can't get rid of them myself. After confirming with a lawyer I trust that this letter was in fact not bullshit, it was coming from a real law firm, 
and with my already warmed up sense of justice, I have decided I was gonna take legal action. And just like that, with their help, we were able to prove that I was using this first. Uh, their, their reach they were doing with the trademark was way too wide. They were hitting everything from fucking the name of the soil to a t-shirt to your mom. And because we were able to prove that we were there first, basically, we got a expedited request of a trademark. Basically, we got a trademark before they did. So today I'm proud to tell you guys that I can operate under Epitome Games, Epitome Games. Did I say Epitome Games? I'm probably not even pronouncing that word right. It's it? Epitome me? Epi I don't even know. Anyway, it's mine. It's mine. Fuck you. But it's safe to say that all the money that this YouTube channel has made, it all disappears in these procedures. A further effort in content creation was kind of unjustified and even penalizing. The existential dread coming from this uh, realization, <laughs> the stress that it caused, it was becoming uh, a real challenge. It would affect my mental health, my physical health, and that affected my self worth. I did not intend to slow down making videos like creating content, it just it naturally happened. And then eventually, life did get better. I was able to find a job that I actually liked, reconnected with some friends, and start taking care of my body. And after a bit of doing my 9 to 5 and also taking in some freelance contract on the side, I was finally debt free for the first time ever since I was like 19, ever since I left the family household. We found a very nice place to stay, and now for the past three years, we've been going on a walk every single day for the last three years. The time away, it got me thinking about, you know, why I cared in the first place. Teaching was never the reason why I made content. I I hated school. Nah, it's actually much more straightforward than that. It's um, it's whatever makes me happy right now. I like to share with others. Sometimes that comes out as teaching. Sometimes that comes out as a live stream. Sometimes it's me playing games. And right now, I like to create cool shit. And I want to do that. And I want to share it with you guys. That is the sentiment behind Mercenary Camp. One year ago, I have decided to dedicate one day of the week to creating cool shit. It didn't matter what. The goal was to be consistent and I would share my journey and stay accountable through the power of live streaming. I've launched a Twitch stream and thus far we created an amazing 3D overlay that helps us interact with the viewers. We raise money for charity got in the top 20 runners of my favorite childhood game and right now I'm making two games one of them is a multiplayer game and the other one is a single player horror game that I plan to release on Steam and I'm doing all that with the best community out there I really have the feeling that I'm part of a community now. And this content creation, it's no longer a solo effort, it's a chapter we write as a team through goofs and gaffs, good deeds, self-development, and games. I like this type of content a lot more. I used to be afraid of it. I used to be afraid of what people would think about me being live all the time. But I'm proud of who I am, and I'm proud of who I became. Je suis fier de mes accomplissements et des obstacles que j'ai surmontés. My streaming time has increased a lot ever since we began this experiment. And um, if you're curious to see the schedule, it's down there beneath the channel in the about section. The schedule is always updated. On Twitch, I found friends. I found a community of game dev. I found really interesting people. I get to be connected to a lot of interesting people and I get to have immediate feedback, which is just, it's just amazing. Uh, whether it's good or bad, at the end of the day, I'm just trying to get better at what I do. I just also enjoy sharing that process with you guys. So I think I'll be there for a foreseeable future. 
But your support kept me going for the last 13 years already. Why not more? I would like to thank all of you guys for sticking around. I'll see you in the sewers.